I feel there's something that has to be said for non-Linux users coming over or looking at the Linux and that's something that's never being told and that is Linux users are very much like that mechanic family member or friend who keeps their vehicle on the road for like 800,000 or a million kilometers plus and parts are falling off of it and they're constantly like carrying a box of tools in their, their box because they're keeping it going. That's very much what a lot of Linux users are like out there. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain why I feel a lot of Linux users are like that. Now just a little bit about me. I am actually a very patient person. I do quite a bit of tedious hobbies. For example, woodworking, I do my own carpentry work, I do plumbing, electrical, I've made furniture that didn't require any fasteners. It's all held together by mortisons and tenon joints and whatnot. So there's no no nail, brad nails, no nails, no screws, no nothing holding these furniture pieces together. I've forged swords, I've written code, I've designed games, I've done all kinds of stuff. Uh, I build computers, I enjoy IT work, and yet to thread a bolt onto a lug nut for the third try, my blood pressure starts going up. And it starts ratcheting up every time I try and get that bolt on. So I get horrible bolt rage. So anything to do with vehicles, I just don't have that patience. Why do I get that way? Because to me, a car is like the tool that I get into. I leave home, I get in, I drive, I arrive. After I'm done, I get back into the car and I drive back. That is its only use. For many, many people out there, that is what a computer is like. So if if you can relate to that with a computer, like if you're not inside a computer and tinkering and, and changing out RAM and all kinds of stuff, or putting a $100 cooler on there when you don't need to put a $100 cooler on there, and you can get away with a stock cooler or even just some Best Buy or Staples or whatever, any kind of generic OEM computer, if you're getting by with that, that might be your first hint that Linux might not be for you. What I noticed with my channel was when I did that Bazite video, it's, it really drew out a lot of Linux users who were recommending different things. And I, after a while, I started to, to realize a lot of us Linux users are like the varying degrees of that mechanic, family member, or friend who keeps their vehicle on the road far, far longer than any of the rest of us would. I have a brother. And he did this exact same thing. His mirror fell out driving down the road. So what did he do? He went and found a similar one because he couldn't get the exact Toyota mirror. Found something similar and epoxied and siliconed it in there. And that worked. So that worked for it. He made just about 700,000 kilometers before the engine blew. But he did like weird things. I mean, he put like JB Weld on the block. Stuff like that. So if you have a mechanic friend like that and he rants and raves about this this model and this make and how good it is and look at i've made i've driven this thing for 20 years i've saved thousands tens of thousands of dollars on this vehicle and I, it's gotten me everywhere i need to go and you know the stories you know he's driven everywhere you know they've gone this place that place he's still driving it the thing is falling apart but what he's not telling you is every 2000 kilometers from this point from 200 300,000 kilometers total from that point on, they've been under their vehicle, tying up their muffler, reattaching a strap, putting a new bolt in, changing out a gasket, tearing it apart, tearing this in, putting that on. Maybe they get out and they look and they go, hey, I used to have a door panel. Uh, there's no door panel in that corner now anymore. Things like that. There is just so many little things, but they're not telling you that every 2,000 kilometers, something gets changed or in the mornings you see them get out reach behind their their seat pull out a hammer go into their hood tap it a few times and their vehicle starts in the morning and it's not every morning it's just randomly at every occasional morning now you and i who are not car enthusiasts if that happened to us we're calling a mechanic we can't deal with it we don't know what it is and if we do attempt to hit that starter we might hit it so hard that we need to buy a whole new starter. Things like that. So you need to be very cautious about looking at Linux and whether or not it is right for you. Because a lot of these advice from that point of view, even from my own video, I'll admit, even though I tried to choose a beginner-friendly, Bazite style of Linux, you're still going to have little fixing points in there. 
you're still going to have different things that you might not be able to do. There are chances that when you log on to go to a meeting that you've got in 15 minutes, you might be doing two hours of mic troubleshooting because it will not play. It's worked for the past how many weeks and all of a sudden last night it had an update. Now nothing works. That is what Linux is like. I'm not saying Windows isn't like that. I'm just saying Linux has more chances, more times that it does that. Oh, and there's another thing. There's getting to be so many Linux users that now the security of just not getting a target-rich environment is no longer a virus protection because now they are starting to hit a little more often with Linux users. There are more viruses out there that are targeting users as there are getting to be more Linux users. So that's something with the security end. Uh, that was one of the things you might hear in an old video about security being more relevant. Well, that's also another thing. that It's getting less relevant as time is going on now. That's for a different video, though, and a different chat. But here, with the mechanics side, you have to be aware that there are varying degrees of Linux users, just like there are varying degrees of mechanic users and enthusiasts, car enthusiasts. So a car enthusiast will go out there, and if you can't relate to this, you're not a car enthusiast, spending $10,000, hours and hours of your time, weekends, pulling out parts, putting these new parts in, buying a scanner, tweaking your computer system to run these parts a little better to gain 10 more horsepower. If you can't relate to that, you're probably not a car enthusiast. Now, if you can't relate to that in terms of how you treat your computer, you're probably not a computer enthusiast. And again, Linux might not be for you. So this is where it kicks in. With these car enthusiasts, there are different levels of these mechanics and car enthusiasts and DIYers. So if you broke a mirror off your car, can you drive without that mirror? Could you epoxy a similar looking, and I'm, I'm talking, he had epoxy squeezing out the side, clear silicone looking epoxy squeezing out the side of the mirror and it was kind of fuzzy and slightly off. <laughs> if you can live with that, or Maybe you're the DIYer who can go out to a scrapyard, get a side mirror that is a different color than what it used to be, but you can live with it. You still, it still functions. It's a left side mirror, driver side side mirror, let's say. And some people may need to go get the proper part with the proper color matching and everything. And others may need to go get straight from the dealer, bring it into the shop and have the dealer bring it in. Because I mean, wiring, Next thing, you might not have like a speedometer and attack and, and maybe your radio doesn't work after you've wired in your own left mirror. So there are things that might not, you might not be comfortable with. That's the same level in a computer. And then there are also these Linux users that can go, I don't need a mirror. I got a right side and I got a rear view mirror. And then there are even more Linux users who can ignore even further and go, yeah, I got a rear view mirror and hold that mirror up and whenever he needs to look behind him and kind of tilt it and angle it. That, you got to remember, is very much what a lot of Linux users out there are. Now, I'm not saying there isn't computer or Windows users out there like that. They, yes, there are people who turn the music up loud enough that they don't hear that rattling and clanging in their motor. And they just sort of ignore it, hoping it goes away. So they just turn the views up. There are that type of people in Linux and in in Windows. So you can't escape that. There's there's always those people. And there's always the, the mechanics for Windows or for Linux. I'm just saying many of the people who have moved over to Linux in one shape or form is one of those levels of enthusiasts or mechanics who, you know, has varying degrees of acceptance of what works or what they are willing to do on fixing a computer. So if you can relate to the getting into the car in the morning and it doesn't work and you're calling a taxi because you have absolutely no clue and no desire to figure out what's wrong with your car but you absolutely need it but you need to get to work so you call a taxi or an Uber then Linux might not be for you because Windows as much as many of us hate it that really kind of is the best functioning vehicle in this case with an operating system. Whether or not that gives into your acceptance of the virus, I mean Windows, or buying another computer that will run Windows 11 and eventually that Windows, I am not looking forward to that Copilot. I can't even think of the name right now. 
but the one that snaps screenshots of everything you're doing on your computer and has AI analyze it. I can't think of that now. Oh, it's Copilot Plus stuff. That's the new AI thing. That's one of my biggest concerns. So it's probably just going to become a gaming thing. And like I said in one of my other videos, I'm comfortable using Linux. Uh, but you need to be aware that that is what it is like. It is like a mechanic or some other patient thing. Maybe woodworking. Maybe changing your own electricity. Your own electrical work or plumbing work or shingling your house. These different things like that. If you would rather just pay somebody to do it because you don't want to hassle yourself with doing any of those. But that's your computer world. Then you might not want to stick around for Or you might not want to change over to Linux. Now, that being said, if you are wanting to dip your toes into Linux, but you're not really using your computer for anything important, maybe it's just your kid's computer, or maybe it is just that computer that you're going to put under your TV and use it like a media center. Okay, so I've got a PS3, and I've got an old Xbox One. These things will eventually crap out on me, so I'm going to just toss them away eventually, and that's what will be. There will be a small little computer under it, running like Bazite, because, you know, it kind of became one of my favorites for just this. And it all it's going to be there is accessing streaming internet, you know, maybe some retro gaming. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to be a workhorse. It's, it's not going to do any of that things. So if that's something that you're interested in, there are videos out there that I've got. There are also a video, many videos out there on the internet too that you can find. And go with whatever works or speaks to you the most. But... When it comes to actually choosing whether or not to leave and try Linux, you need to understand that that is kind of the world that you are entering. And if you're not prepared to enter that or you don't want to enter that, I can completely relate. Um, from my point of view, I've got a father who was a planer man and a farmer. I grew up on a farm. Um, one brother is a heavy-duty mechanic. The other brother is a millwright for, like, sawmills, which is where my father also was a planerman. And so they all did these mechanical chain sprockets, bolts. I can't stand doing mechanical work of any sort. And yet I can build computers, write code, uh, build a house. If I had to, I can build my own house. It wouldn't be any problem for me. And the funny part about that is all three of them hate woodworking none of them use a computer one is adamant anti-tech even and they just they don't even do any of the things i do but they all love mechanic work go figure so that's where i'm coming from and that is what i just wanted to let that out there i wanted people to understand to know you're hearing advice from enthusiasts and mechanics who keep their vehicle on the road in this in this metaphor Linux computer users who are constantly fixing, changing, tweaking, or adjusting their computer. It doesn't bother them, and they don't understand why nobody else gets bothered by that. But I'm hoping even some of them are watching this and going, Oh yeah, I hate cars too. Yeah. Okay, so that's what non-computer users are like. Okay, gotcha. So that's just something that I want to throw out there. And you may have noticed that this is a Bannerlord video in the background. So keep that eye out. I am going to be stepping away from YouTube just a little bit here to focus on game development as my hobby because I mean these are my hobbies. So if you're interested in game development, if you're interested in these other things, and that was the intention of going to Bazite, was to help some of you build a budget computer that you can kind of use without too much worry about whether or not your system will work or not work. And you don't want to try and build an entire operating system yourself by using Arch Linux. Okay? Heads up on that. If you hear anybody recommend Arch Linux there and you're a brand new user they're trolling you run they're not they are not your friends or they're your friends and they're they're playing a practical joke on you because that's an operating system you basically build yourself almost and it there's very little documentation that you can find to help you through on things like that at least it used to be it's getting a little better but it's still ultimately way up there in terms of usage especially compared to something like Bassite so if you're not into the huge doing your thing with uh, with computers like that and you're not into tearing out the RAM and all kinds of troubleshooting and trying to figure stuff out there and and patience for that, you, you can feel your blood pressure notching up as you're dealing with a computer that's not working or a printer that's not wanting to install, your Linux is going to take a significant hit on your end. 
So, I hope that video helps clear some things up, and I hope you enjoyed some of the, the fighting. I do plan on putting archery in here, so I'm attempting to snipe stuff. Alright, have a good day.